Okay, we're going to talk about multiple alleles, and so a great example for that is going to be with rabbits. And so as we see here from our little picture, um, there are four different alleles uh, that are going to exist. Okay, so there's the big C for full coat color, there's the C with the CH for chinchilla, there's the C with the H for Himalayan, and then there's just a little C, um, which is for the albino. And so in the population, like the whole rabbit population, there are all these different alleles, but it's the same just like anything else that we've been talking about before, is that each person, like each rabbit, is still only going to have two alleles. And the way I like to think of it is that um, this order here is determining um, rank, okay? And so one is going to be in charge of everything else. And so no matter what it's paired with, if you have a big C, maybe with the CH, you know, for the Himalayan, the big C is going to dominate over. So the big C dominates over anything else that it's paired with. Um, but then if there is no big C, second in rank is going to be the chinchilla. Um, the only way Himalayan is going to be shown is if one and two are gone. And then the same thing with the albino. The only way that albino is going to show is if, you know, one, two, and three aren't there. Okay, so that's sort of like the the rank. It's kind of like, you know, if, if dad's not home, then, I don't know, mom's in charge. And when mom's not and dad aren't home, then maybe the oldest child is in charge. And then when the oldest child isn't there or mom or dad, then uh, the next child um, is in charge at home. Okay. Um, so any sort of example like that uh, would work. So <clears throat> I'm going to make this small so that we have lots of room. This gets big. So if we're doing um, a pennant square, let's just say that we're crossing um, a full coat color, which has um, a Himalayan paired with it. And then we will do a chinchilla with an albino. And so since that albino is just a little C and nothing else is paired with it, I'm going to make sure I do a curly Q C so that I don't get confused with my big C. All right, so then we fill in. And this will get a little crazy because there's lots of letters. Okay. And then here, uh, we need to see, so the chinchilla is going to be um, dominant over this little H, and then big C, and then the C with the H is going to dominate over the little C, okay? So for genotypes, um, we just kind of rewrite everything that's in, the, in those boxes. And nothing looks uh, the same. So each box is going to be different. Each one fourth uh, big C, little C, and one fourth C with the H, little C. Okay. Now for phenotypes, um, we just need to look at, at rank here, and so. As long as I have a big C, then I'm going to have a full coat color. And so this box has a big C, and this box has a big C. So two of the four are going to be full. Okay, so full coat color. Um, and then when I'm looking here, this is the one that, that's the one box that's going to be chinchilla. Okay, so again, just keep looking over here um, at the key. That'll really help you out. Okay, so chinchilla. And then this last box here um, is going to be a, Himal a Himalayan. Okay. So um, that's with the multiple alleles, okay? So remember, each individual can only still have two alleles. It's just in the population, um, there's more than two alleles, and so it becomes uh, a case where those alleles are in rank. And so the top rank will dominate over anything else um, that's paired with it. All right, the other thing that we're going to do, we're going to learn about two things in this one, is uh, then about... <clears throat> polygenic traits
Okay, so polygenic, polygenic traits. So here, if we're looking, if we kind of break down the word, I think that helps out a lot. So poly means many. Uh, genic, we can think of genes and traits or just traits. So it's going to be a trait that's going to be determined by many genes. Um, when we did our flipping of the coins to figure out what our babies were going to look like, uh, skin color was a classic. So that was the example in the lab that we did. Um, and skin color is still a very classic example of polygenic. Um, and so oftentimes, you know, there's going to be like three different uh, genes that are going to be all combining together to figure out skin color. And so are you big A, big A, big B, big B, big C, little C? Are you heterozygous for all three? Um, <clears throat> or any combination of the bigs and the littles between the A, B, and Cs. And so you end up having like 64 different um, skin color tones that can arise just because we have like three, um, three different genes that are all coming together uh, to figure out skin color. Um, for us, a lot of times what we'll end up doing is we would just do a Punnett square um, with A's, we'd do a, a second Punnett square with B's, and then we would do a third Punnett square with C's, and it would be the same thing like as a dye hybrid, except we would end up like multiplying together all the different mini answers that maybe we would see below, which just leads to a lot of math. So isn't that fun? Okay, but the big thing here is polygenic are traits where many genes, so many genes, are going to be determining um, your trait. Okay, and when you have polygenic traits, you end up with a wide range of phenotypes. Okay, so you end up with lots of different phenotypes just because of all the different combinations that you can get. Um, from all those different uh, genes. All right, hope that makes sense.